Welcome back. As you know, I am Eli, the computer guy, and in today's class, I'm going to be showing you how to use serial communication in order to send commands to your Arduino microcontroller. So basically what we're going to be able to do today is we're going to use a serial monitor, and through the serial monitor within the Arduino IDE, we are going to send commands, and with those commands, we will be able to turn on individual LEDs, we'll be able to turn on all the LEDs at the same time, and turn off all of the LEDs. What this project is showing you is how you can send commands to your Arduino, have your Arduino be able to interpret those commands, and then how to trigger physical events from those commands. Now, sending commands to your Arduino using serial communication may seem like a bit of a useless party trick. Okay, Eli, I can connect this to my computer with the Arduino IDE, and I can turn on LEDs, or I could turn on fans or pumps or other things, but how is that useful in the real world? Why this is going to be useful in the real world is in future projects, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be connecting our Arduino to a Raspberry Pi, and essentially what we're going to be able to do is we're going to be able able to use our Raspberry Pi as a compute module for the Arduino. So what we can do is we can uh, basically create a sensor array with the Arduino and then also be able to uh, connect things like relays to be able to turn on fans or pumps or that type of thing. And what's going to happen is our Arduino is going to send whatever the sensor readings are to our Raspberry Pi. Our Raspberry Pi is then going to be able to store those sensor readings into something like a MySQL database. And then the Raspberry Pi is then going to be able to do uh, SQL statements, be able to scan through all of the readings that have been recorded in that database. And then based off of whatever parameters we have set, it will then be able to send commands back to the Arduino to do something such as turn on a fan. So what we can do here is instead of having just a very simple uh, routine where if the temperature gets above 90 degrees, then turn on the fan, right? That's a very simple thing to do. What we could then, what we could have happen is we can have the Arduino communicate with the Raspberry Pi every time it reads uh, from the temperature sensor, that'll be stored in the database. And then what we can do is we can say, if the temperature is above 90 degrees, let's say 80% of, of the time in the past 10 minutes, then turn on the fan. And so what all of that compute, that can occur uh, within the Raspberry Pi. And then when it sees that the fan should be turned on, it can send serial communication back to the Arduino and it can say, okay, turn the fan on now. Then after the fan has been on for a while, basically the temperature readings keep going back to the Raspberry Pi and it can see, okay, if the temperature has been below let's say 80 degrees, you know, 90% of the time for the past 20 minutes, turn off the fan. Or what can happen is since all of this information is again going into the Raspberry Pi, it's able to store it into a database, we could then have you know an escalation of physical events. If the temperature is above 90 degrees, 90% 90 of the time for 10 minutes, turn on the fan. After the fan is on, if the temperature remains above 90 degrees, 90% 90 of the time, let's say for an additional 20 minutes, then turn the air conditioner on. Then what's really cool here is since you're using a Raspberry Pi, right? This is a full-fledged computer, has an operating system, so it can connect to things like APIs. What you can do is then after the fan has been turned on, after the air conditioner has been turned on, if the temperature still doesn't go down, you can have this connect to, let's say, a Twilio API to be able to send out an SMS message to your administrator to say, hey, uh, something is going wrong with our server room. We have turned on the fan. We have turned on the, uh, the air conditioning system, but the temperature is still too high, please go and actually take a look at the facility. So this is where we can use essentially a Raspberry Pi or basically any other computer, any other computer running an operating system. We can use this in order to become the brain for your uh, your Arduino. So the Arduino, this, this can control the sensors, this can control the physical actions, again, turning on relays, turning on buzzers, turning on lights, that type of thing. But then the compute can actually be happening in the Raspberry Pi. And so we'll be able to send commands to the Raspberry Raspberry Pi, uh, or we'll be able to send information to the Raspberry Pi, and then we'll be able to send commands from the Raspberry Pi back to the Arduino. And that's, that's why this is a fundamental project, and that's why the outcome, basically, as we continue down this track, will be very cool. So basically, this is, this is what I'm going to show you how to do today, is simply send the commands to the Arduino to be able to trigger these physical uh, uh, actions. And then once you understand this, we can start getting a little bit more complicated with our projects.
So let's do a bit of a demonstration before I show you how to build this project. So here I have the Arduino, it's connected to my LEDs, and then this little cord right here connects back to my MacBook Pro that has the Arduino IDE installed. So I have uh, opened up the, uh, the serial monitor here. What I'm simply going to do is I'm going to press a little reset. And so when I reset, that's going to reboot the Arduino. Once it's rebooted, basically now what we see is we can see it says type a command. So I can type in white, blue, red, all, or off, right? So uh, let's say I want the white light to be on. I can simply uh, type in white up here. I can hit enter, that turns the white light on. If I want the red light to be on, I type in red, that turns off the white light and turns on the red light. Uh, same is with blue. Uh, if I want it to be, make it really colorful, I can then type in all, so that'll turn all the lights on. So all the lights are now on, and if I want to turn them all off, they can now be off. Again, when we're taking a look at these LEDs, turning on an LED is essentially the same process as turning on a relay that will connect to a fan, or turning on a relay that will connect to a air conditioning unit, so on and so forth. So if you can turn on an LED, you can turn on something uh, much more significant. But this is basically how the project works. We are able to type in a command using serial communication. The, uh, the Arduino is able to read that command and then actually trigger a physical response here. So with that, let me just show you how to build this little project and then I'll show you the code itself. So here's how this project gets built. Uh, we're basically using just our standard Arduino Uno here, the Arduino Uno. Uh, we are using uh, pins uh, 8, 9, and 10, so digital pins 8, 9, and 10, and they are going to control uh, the red, the white, and the blue LEDs. So we have three uh, red, white, and blue LEDs here, and then we have our resistors to make sure we don't blow out our LEDs. Uh, past that, basically the negative. So positive comes from 8, 9, and 10, that goes to the resistor. The resistor then connects uh, to the positive side of the LED. Negative side of the LED comes back to the negative rail. The negative rail then comes back to the Arduino on ground. So basically, at this point, you should understand how to be able to connect a couple of LEDs to your Arduino, and this is how it physically looks. So with that, let's go over and take a look at the code itself. Okay, so here is the uh, the simple script that I've created for this little project. Most of this should be recognizable to you. Uh, the new things will be down here in the loop where basically we are going to be reading from the serial monitor. So we're gonna be using this read string until function. So we're gonna be able to use that in order to grab the command from the serial monitor. We're going to set the, the, uh, the, the variable command to whatever that value is. And then we are going to be testing against that value. So that, that's kind of the new stuff in this particular project. If we go up here and we take a look at this, uh, the first thing that we do need to do is we need to create the variable command. And so since it's going to be a word, it, that it has to be string. So we create a variable called command that is a string. We're then going to define uh, the LED pins. So uh, pound define, blue LED is digital pin 8, white LED is digital pin 9, and red LED is digital pin 10. And that's the initial setup. Then we're going to go down into the void setup. Down here, the first thing that we have to do is we actually have to turn on the serial communication. So serial.begin at 9600. Now, it is important that you decide what speed you want the serial communication to be. If you go to serial monitor, this is where we have the baud rate down here. Normally, the standard is 9600, but you can put it to 19,000, 38,000, 57,000, 115,000, so on and so forth. When you're first learning and you're sending, sending simple commands, I would say at 9600, but depending on what you're doing, you may need to change that this is where you set the speed so just make sure the speed here and the speed at the serial monitor match it doesn't really matter for this project what they are as long as they match then we're going to go down we're simply going to use the pin mode function basically blue led white led red led we are going to be setting these to output and then we're going to simply delay for uh, 2000 milliseconds two seconds just to make sure everything sets itself up properly then we're going to print out on the serial monitor uh, type command white blue red all or off so we're going to be giving our commands to the users. This is an important thing to be thinking about whenever you are creating projects. Remember, if your users do not know what the hell to do next, then they're going to get confused, frustrated, and then they're going to start screaming at you. If you can put just little, little like hints about what the hell they're supposed to do, that will make everybody's life a lot easier. So again, imagine, imagine this was connected to a fan system or an HVAC system or some kind of pump system, something like that, right? You would want 
want to tell your user how to interact with the system. You know, like say on, you know, on equals turn pump on, off equals turn pump off, that type of thing. Do make sure you put this information in. It will make your user's life just so much easier when basically they're sitting here, they're looking at a command prompt and they can say, okay, what, what am I supposed to do? Okay, these are, these are the commands, right? It'll make life easier. And then we come down here to the actual loop itself. And again, most of this is pretty simple. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to say if and then serial dot available. So basically, if ser serial communication is available, then do the rest of this. There is no else. Basically, if it's available, do the rest of this. If it's not available, don't. Right. Uh, then we're going to go down here and now we need to set the value for the command variable. What we're going to do is from serial. So the serial that we keep using, you know, serial dot print line, serial dot begin. We're going to use that. And then we're going to use the function read string until. And then what we're going to say is basically until new line. So basically read string until somebody hits enter. So grab all of that information and that is going to be assigned the value of the command uh, string so basically so you can type in so with here uh if you go it's not it's not going to work properly but like i can do right i can do uh red and that will turn the red light on or i can do billy bob is a nut right and it can grab all of that and basically it's now telling us bad command, but it was actually able to grab that as a full command. So if you wanted to add arguments, if you wanted to add options, if you want to add more than just your basic commands, basically what, what this does until, until that next line, it grabs everything that you plug in uh, to that, that serial monitor command line. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to do command.trim. So we're going to use the trim function. And what the trim function is going to do is is going to eliminate any possible white space uh, around uh, what is in the command. So again, down here, right, we're going to be testing against white, blue, red, all or off. But right, white is not white with a white space. Red or blue is not blue with two white spaces. One of the issues you can get into when you're dealing with people typing in commands is for any number of reasons, you might get additional white space around uh, what you're plugging in. And obviously the command with white space does not equal the command without white space. So if the, if the command uh, variable value here has white plus one or two white spaces afterwards, and you do this if command equals, it's not going to equal. So what trim does is it gets rid of that that surrounding white space just to make sure we have a more clean variable to test against then we're going to come down here and basically what we're going to say is if command dot and it's the equals function so the command equals white so if the command equals white digital right so we're going to turn on white led we'll turn on turn off blue we'll turn off uh, red else if so else so it's not that if command equals blue we'll turn off the white led turn on the blue turn off the red else if another else if command equals red we turn off the we turn off the white we turn off the blue and we turn on the red else if command dot equals all then all of them are turned on else if command dot equals off all of them are turned off and else so basically it's not any of those then it'll serial dot print line bad command so say again it's that billy like when we took a look at that with that whole uh, billy bo bob thing if we go back here billy bo bob is a nut basically we saw here this that was a bad command so when i typed in the command red that worked fine uh, when i typed in the 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 Billy Bo Bob is a nut, basically it failed out. Then the final thing that I'm gonna do down here, just for troubleshooting purposes, this can be uh, commented out later, is serial.print command, just the words command, and then serial.print line, what the command is. Again, for troubleshooting purposes, if we go here and we took a look at the serial monitor, we can make sure what's being done. So I typed in uh, the command red, and so it typed out the command red. When I got the bad command response, it told me what the bad command was, right? So if I, I uh, oh, I don't know, I'm just, I'm just being stupid. And so I type in BLU, then it tells me it's a bad command and I can see that's BLU. So it's okay, BLU, and I can say, oh, I'm supposed to type in BLUE. So if I type in BLUE, 
then that actually turned on the blue LED. If we go over and I actually, again, I, I show you <clears throat> the, the actual physical device itself. Again, so right now, if I did red, so let's say I did two, R, two Ds by accident, I hit enter. So what I can see is that's bad command. And then I can see the command is R-E-D-D. -D. I put in too many Ds. So if I do red, now the red light turns on. So this is basically how the project works. And then once you understand how to be able to send commands uh, using serial communication to your Arduino and be able to interpret those commands, then we can start doing some interesting things going into the future. So now you've learned how to use the serial monitor to be able to send commands to your Arduino using serial communication. So you, you determine what commands you want the commands to be, you determine what, what physical events you want to occur, and then basically you're able to code that and make that happen. Uh, again, why this is going to be cool going into the future is what we can do is we can have the Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi can actually act as a brain, kind of think of it as a compute module for the Arduino. It can collect information from the Arduino, then it can run its own scripts, determine what's supposed to happen, and then from there, this will then be able to send commands to the Arduino, again, to trigger physical events. Right now, we're turning on LEDs, but again, in the Arduino world, turning on an LED is almost exactly the same as turning on a fan, turning on a pump, turning on an HVAC system, turning on a buzzer, turning on anything, right? Most of the things, oops, we're gonna be connecting our Arduino into are essentially all on off devices so just like we can turn on an LED we can turn on a much larger piece of equipment more or less it's the same deal and so I think this is gonna be really cool uh, as we go forward to design more interesting projects again be giving being able to give our Arduino projects a little bit of brain power uh, will be pretty cool again with this type of thing do realize like when I talk about the Raspberry Pi the Raspberry Pi is simply a Linux computer so you could have a full-fledged uh, desktop computer or a laptop computer also acting as the brain power for the Arduino. I'm simply doing this because it gives us a nice little form factor for things like IoT devices, right? So you could you could put all of this, you could just glue this together Put it put on a power cord and slap it on a wall or something in a way you couldn't if you have a full-fledged desktop computer so i think this is a pretty cool thing and i think it will open up a lot of possibilities for us as we go forward uh, with creating projects these little iot projects using arduinos so as always i enjoy teaching this class and I look forward to seeing you on the next one